I was 102 uh, last December, born in 1914. I don't know, what am I? And you are 97. Well, the Wyatts were a very charming, a charming couple, really, you know, very gracious. And, and uh, he was a, quite a raconteur and a wit. Well, we met in Palm Beach because we were neighbors down there. We were just, uh, their house was one door away from where we built our house in 1926. And uh, their oldest daughter was five years younger, but uh, we still, they used to come over and play. And we had a wonderful playroom, you know, up on the third floor of our house. And so it was a very popular place for us young people. And then years later, because of that first uh, relationship, uh, Alice came to Chicago uh, for her coming out and she made a debut in Chicago with her cousin. And so we got together again then. And uh, that uh, started things off and we met several times later. And she was actually visiting us uh, in the uh, spring or June of 1941. And I was called to duty in the Navy because I was in the reserve. And uh, we decided to get married before we had to take off. And so she, <clears throat> she went to California, San Francisco with me when mm -hmm. I reported for duty. So we had an interesting phone call with Mr. and Mrs. Wyeth to, to announce that we wanted to be married. And of course, it was tremendous shock on the phone. You can't do this to your mother and blah, blah, blah. But uh, we had to persuade them over the phone, which we did, and they were very gracious and came out and uh, had a, a nice wedding at, and reception at her her aunt's house. Her aunt's house. Yeah, Mrs. Orr. In Chicago. Yes, it, this was in Chicago. So it all ended happily, uh -huh. and uh, Mr. Wyeth was a wonderful father-in-law, very understanding and uh, uh, very reserved. I mean, like some fathers-in-law, some mm -hmm. fathers-in-law, he didn't try and interfere at all. He was always very appreciative of everything I did, and so mm -hmm. and so was Mrs. Wyeth and. The, very happy. They used to visit us almost every year over a period. Very uh, uh, ambitious, and but they used to drive from Florida up to Connecticut, and then to Illinois, <clears throat> then to sometimes to Michigan, and sometimes to the farm down in southern Illinois. So they were wonderful parents and parents-in-law. We'll be married, it'll be 76 years in June, quite a long time. I have tenure, I think. Of course, I didn't get, come on the scene until I was 12 years old. Alice was seven. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so I learned quite a bit about their early life and uh, what they liked to do. Mr. Wyeth was a very good father and uh, liked the outdoors and the things that I know they remembered and loved so much was the fishing trips he took them on. They'd fish out in the ocean and uh, go to the Keys as well, which was a pretty primitive place in those days and quite a wonderful experience that I don't think, I know she never forgot. One of the things that impressed me with the Wyeth girls, too, that I told about later, uh, when we were somewhat older, uh, I, <clears throat> I came back from a trip where I'd seen them, and I remarked to somebody, you know, they're, uh, they're both of those girls, they've been to France at a school, but they also clean their own fish. <laughs> <And> I, 
I thought that was quite impressive. I didn't know any young women that cleaned their own fish. <laughs> so that's why you married me. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good reason. But there were a few others. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. We've been so lucky. So we were very close neighbors, and uh, we saw children as children. We saw a good deal of each other. And I think I mentioned my younger sister was about the same age as Alice, and uh, and they had Flora. He was a little two years older than Alice, and so they were. Very nice neighbors. Well, it was a pretty wonderful life for children. That <laughs> uh, we were going to school down there, of course, and uh, we'd go to school at a reasonable hour, maybe nine o'clock, and then from twelve at twelve o'clock, we'd either go to the bath and tennis club or Gus's bath, where they had the pool and facility. And we didn't have to report back to school until two o'clock. So it was a pretty nice, leisurely life. But it was something to remember, but I don't think that uh, I realized, you know, how important the two architects were to Palm Beach until I was older. At 12 or 15 years old, I wasn't too conscious of that. And I don't know that they were too. I, I'm sure they were proud of their fathers reputation, mm -hmm. which was just tops, of course. Uh, we had a, quite a nice house. Yeah, you know, Trey Fontana it was a lovely yeah. house. Yeah. Uh, well, the name of the house was Trey Fontane, which meant, I don't know what, Trey Fontane. Oh, lots of, uh, lots of uh, fountains, or, or three fountains, that's what it means, yeah. <laughs> we had one fountain in the in the uh, entrance, you know, and then one in the little room that you walk into, and then the one out in the in the yard, in the patio. Patio, or hmm. so that's why it was called Tre Fontane. An unusual uh, house in a way. The upstairs was all out. Was open to the to the well, what the patio or the, yeah. the courtyard? Yeah, look down on the on the uh, patio with not, there was not a the, fountain in it, of course. Not the patio. Or maybe three fountains. I don't know. Anyway, it, it was it was nice, and unless it was a cold in the cold weather, it wasn't as nice. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's uh, in the middle of the house. That's Dini the dining room was there. That's opening on to the loggia there. The yeah. Around there. You, could, you could walk right through to the garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those loggias, they were sort of typical of our house and your house. Were wonderful. You could sit in the shelter, you know, uh, and still look out into these lovely courtyards. Another one. That look familiar? I think that's the front door, and yeah. here, uh -huh. here it is. The yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, it's sort of fun to see these. <coughs> of course, so many of the houses have this wonderful ironwork, that's sort of typical, and uh, uh, and it's open when you go in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. sixty-one. <laughs> Oh, no, yeah, no, Middle no. Road was a very quiet street, of course. And you could, these loggias were wonderful. You probably had a part of your dining room uh, opened on the loggia, and actually we had an eating place out, so we could eat, you know, well, in we, the covered area of the courtyard. We didn't. You did not? No. Mm -hmm. But, uh, there wasn't well, a very large table, but it seems to me we always ate lunch there in good weather. And we ate early, uh, not not with the family un until <laughs> we were fairly grown up, and then we were sat with our parents, except when they entertained. 
never went out. I think that was probably quite often for them. They were yeah. very active socially. Well, she sang quite often, and she, she played the piano very well. She, and uh, she had a French song that she... Let me give the title. Yeah, T'en souviens tu, meaning, uh, do you remember? Te souviens tu, disait un capitaine, au vétéran qui mendiait son pain. Te souviens tu, qu'autrefois dans la plaine, tu détourna un sabre de mon sein. Sous les drapeaux d'une belle chérie, tous deux jadis, nous avons, nous avons combattu. Je m'en souviens, que, car je te dois la vie, mais toi, soldat, dis-moi, t'en souviens-tu Je m'en souviens, car je te dois la vie, mais toi, soldat, dis-moi, t'en souviens-tu of uh, your father oh. with uh, Meisner, and uh, oh. there he is, the man with the big beard. That's I've never seen a picture of him. That. And that's Meisner? That's what they said, yes. Youthful, your father looks. Yeah, he does. And he was, actually was very young then, too. Yeah. He looks very debonair. That uh, the monkey bit my father. No, your, your brother, I think. Oh, no. Wasn't that it? Or mm -hmm. the, yeah, not, oh. not father. He had an office uh, in the uh, near in the business section of Palm Beach. On yeah. County Road, right down near the bank, wasn't it? Yeah, all well, right. Maybe it was in the bank building. <laughs> yeah, he might have been in the same building. I, I don't know. But that's where he was. He must have had quite a staff there too during the well, he had those a, busy days. He had a, quite a few drafts. He had a, a, one man, anyway, uh, did a lot of drawing for him. Yeah, I think that was one of the wonderful parts about Palm Beach in those days, for, particularly for young people. Of course, there was very little traffic compared to these days. So I don't recall bicycling much, but we could walk anywhere we wanted. And, uh, you know, with or without our parents or uh, any any help at all. It was, it was sort of a wonderful, easy uh, place to get around. Quiet. I remember one popular place. How oh, was the? Uh, wasn't that the Marion Drugs Marion Drugs Store yeah. or Soda Fountain in uh, the Ponciana Hotel? And that's where I learned about uh, limeades. <laughs> which I really became addicted to. It was such a treat. Royal Pontiana, yes. Probably before World War I, I think, it's suspect. Anywhere you were free to come and go. It, it, yeah, I guess it's so. It's a pretty casual life for children. Go from house to house on your own. Uh, and, and down to the beach, too, I think. Mm -hmm. it's only a, a block. Mrs. Cuddy had a house to the north of you. Yeah, I think there were several houses on the street across from you who were built, I think, uh, the, when we were there in uh -huh. 1926. Uh, there weren't many vacant lots, I don't think, left. Well, there were some to, towards the end of it. Yes, sir. right across the street from us, between our house and your house, was a vacant lot, and then wasn't it the Brokaws that uh, yes, that's built right. a house there? Uh, yes, I think so. I think that was the name. And there was a. They took up all the space, I think, between the oh. two, between uh, Middle Road and the Ocean Boulevard. Uh -huh. One house. Yeah. For a number of years, we went uh, went down for a month or so to. Uh, uh, I just lost the name of the place, the island on the west coast, uh, Sanibel, and we'd always drive over to Palm Beach and spend a night or two and 
we look at the old sites, the um, Tre Fontani and our house, back nearly next door, and, and the house on Woodbridge Road that was Mr. Wyatt designed and built for himself. No longer there. Uh, and I was drive to the inlet, and uh, and I think that was it, and then back uh, to the west coast. I th you know, I think everybody liked him and appreciated him. But um, <clears throat> above all, he was really a very distinguished man. You know, he carried himself that way professionally, and uh, very dignified, and. Uh, even though he had a great sense of humor. And he was a gentleman of the old school. And he would be very uncomfortable with some of the modern manners or lack of manners today. He was always very punctilious. And uh, right to the end, 